I'm going to talk about how decimal point values are stored in computers. Remember, computers are just binary. It's ones and zeros, which is discrete, meaning you can have it a zero or a one. You can't have like a 0 0.8 or 0 0.9324. Uh, it's, it's either zero or, or one. So we have to use these zeros or ones to kind of interpret them differently, use them differently in order to get decimal point values. I'm going to show you those tricks and how that works. Um, so looking at this, there's, there's several ways to do decimal point values. I'm going to show you the most common way used in games. Um, some representations of decimal point numbers are more accurate than others. It's important for banking and financial computations to use a certain kind of format, whereas in games we can lose a little bit of accuracy and, and still have the same res roughly the same result, so it doesn't matter. And that's called the floating point representation. And I'll explain what floating point means in the next video. For now, you can think of them as decimal point numbers. So looking at these digits I have in this number, I have 654.321. And the 654 is more significant than the 321. For example, if this is money, and this is your bank account. If I came and somehow knocked out this bottom portion of the number, uh, it would annoy you, but it wouldn't hurt you that much. Versus if I came in and I knocked out the top portion of this number, well, I just took $654 away from your bank account, which which doesn't work. So so that, that, that has to do with significant digits and things like that. But uh, we, we need to get through our head, or just to remember that the... Far, further left we go, the more important the number. And the reason that is, is when we look at a number like this, there's actually an interpretation we do internally, but we don't think about it when we do it. We just interpret it and it's good. And that is that the six is in the hundredths place. So writing this out mathematically, we get six times 10 to the power of two, plus the next digit is a five. So five times 10 to the power of one, plus the next digit is a 4, so 4 times 10 to the power of 0, anything to the power of 0 is 1, which so this whole entire term will evaluate to 4, which is great. And then plus the next digit is a 3, so 3 times 10 to the power of, and what do we put out here? Well, looking at this, notice, notice this this equation down here, there's a pattern to it. And the pattern is, take the digit from the number, times it by 10, notice every single term has 10, and then raise it to a power. And I'll talk about how we determine the power in a second. But essentially, since six is in the hundreds place, then it's 10 to the two, 10 to the one. Notice the powers are just simply decrementing. It's two, and then one, and then zero. So it's minus minus every time, so 0 minus 1 is negative 1. And if you think about that, 10 to the negative 1 is 1 tenth, which makes it 3 times 1 tenth, which gives us back 0 0.3. But, but think about that. We have the hundreds place, the tens place, the ones place, the tenths place, the hundredths place. Notice I'm slapping a th on the end now and the thousandth place. And, and simply the, the uh, value of the particular digit is determined by the location of the digit in that number, all revolving around this decimal point. So let's, let's, do, let's do the rest of the number. I'm going to go out here and say plus uh, 2 times 10 to the negative 2 plus 1 times uh, 10 to the negative 3. So again, the pattern is digit, base, power. The powers decrement down the terms. The base stays the same every term. We're talking base 10 now. So that means every digit here can go 0 to 9. And then we simply take the digit depend, uh, depending on where the digit is in the number. Well, it just so happens that representing this in binary is exactly the same, which is quite convenient. If I give you, now remember binary, we only have two digits. We have zero and one. We don't have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine anymore. It's just zero, one. So I'm going to give you a decimal point um, 
uh, of not as well it's not decimal usually when we say decimal we're thinking that that actually means base 10 uh, but when I, I said decimal meaning I put a point in here I'm going to call these floating points from now on because that's what they really are in computer science is floating points again I'll talk about the floating in the next video so so we have a number here a floating point binary value and to get its decimal or base 10 value all I have to do from there is uh, use the same formula that I used up here. So, so let's look at this. Um, the first digit is a one. So one times now the base is two, no longer ten. So two to the power of two plus, and then we have another one here. So let's do one times two to the power of one plus the next digit is zero so zero times two to the power of zero plus and we just keep going with the same pattern one we got a one here so one times two to the power of negative one plus zero times two to the power of negative two plus the last digit is a one, one, one times two to the power of negative three. So notice the pattern between this equation down here and this equation is the same. And we take the digit, we use a consistent base, notice the base is the same for every term, and then we decrement the powers here. So two, one, zero, da 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 da. So really, just pause for a moment and think about what this period or this dot in our number means. The period simply indicates where the power 0 and negative 1 sit. The period sits right between them. That's all it really does. You know, in elementary school we talk about how it's a fractional, and, and it is a fractional, but, but really when you think about it in terms of what it really is. The, the period simply determines where 0 is, 0 is on the left, and negative 1 is on the right. And then the rest of the exponents just continue depending on which direction you go. Another thing is notice that the 4 is in the 1's place, the 5 is in the 10's place, the 6 is in the 100's place. Well, the 3 is in the 10's place. Notice the three is three tenths of a number. The two is in the hundredths place, again adding that th s to the end. And the one is in the thousandths place. Well, the same is true in binary. This is the once place. But instead of the tens place here, it's the this this is the ones place, sorry, this is the twos place. And this is the fours place. Ones, twos, fours. Well, going the other way, this is the toots place, or one half. This is the fourths place. And this is the eighths place. So, regardless of which uh, format we use, as long as we know our base and our digits, then we can d use the decimal point here to determine where the exponents lie in this mathematical equation. Now, just for kicks, I want to evaluate this mathematical equation because this returns the base 10 value of this floating point binary number. So let's do that real quick. I'm going to put a lot of spaces in here just so I can navigate with the arrow keys easier. So 1 times 2 to the 2. Well, one 2 to the 2, 2 times 2 is 4, so that gives us a 4. Plus 1 times 2 to the 1. Let me put the addition here. 1 times 2 to the 1. 2 to the 1 is 2, so that gives us a 2. Plus 2 to the 0 is 1, but we have 0 times 2 to the 0, so this term actually drops out to a 0. Then uh, we add 2 to the negative 1. Well, that's 1 half, so 1 times 1 half is 1 half, or 0.5 plus 0 times a fourth. 0 times a fourth is 0. 
And then we have an eighth out here. So 1 times an eighth is 1 eighth, which gives us 0 0.125. So the grand sum total of all these numbers is 4 plus 2 is 6 plus 5 is 6.5 plus 1.25 is, um, well, let's just write it out, 6.625. So don't, don't let binary scare you, especially when I put this decimal point in here, because whether it's base 10 or base 2, it doesn't matter. The, the concepts are still the same. The numbers are just different.